Well, if we learned one thing on Saturday, this is the Terrence Crawford era. After Crawford puts on a masterful and dominant display against Earl Spence Jr. in probably the biggest fight of the past decade. A fight where not only did it determine the number one fighter in the world pound for pound, it gave us the first undisputed welterweight in four belt history, along with cementing Terrence Crawford as one of the all-time greats. He was already a great, but now he is an all-time great in the likes of some of the greatest welterweights and boxers in boxing history. At 40 and 0, the ceiling's only skyrocketing for Terrence Crawford. Yes, he's 35 years old. When I tell you, we all knew this, but he showed it. He is not only the real deal, he is one of the best ever. And I don't say that lightly. lightly. You know, as a huge Earl Spence Jr. fan, that's my favorite boxer of all time. I give Terrence Crawford his props, an absolute masterclass of a performance he put on July 29th against Earl Spence Jr. in the biggest fight of the decade. This is the Never Drop Podcast, where we talk about fights, we talk, we break down fights, we recap fights. If you're looking, if you're listening on YouTube, hey, I got videos from the fight itself. I was in attendance for Spence vs. Crawford. Look on there. I got, I have the knockout on camera, uploaded. Go watch that if you're new. If you haven't seen it, go watch that. Go watch the weigh-in stuff. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the Never Drop Podcast. Go do that. Support the Never Drop Podcast. We're trying to get to 500 subscribers in a couple months. Help me out on that. Let's go. Back to the fight, though, man. What a performance by Terrence Crawford. One of the most dominant performances in a fight that was supposed to be 50-50. It didn't, it didn't look 50-50. It looked like Earl Spence Jr. didn't even deserve to be in the ring, which we all know he clearly did. Well, I'll get to the haters and the naysayers later on in this podcast, but this right now is about Terrence Crawford. And what Terrence Crawford did to Earl Spence Jr. in that ring July 29th was absolutely masterful. You can argue, personally, I thought Spence won the first round, a round where kind of feeling each other out. Spence narrowly won it, and I thought Spence won the third round. One judge gave him the third round, the other two did not. I thought Spence came away, won the third round. Other than that, it there was no doubt in anybody's mind who won those other rounds. Heck, even you could have some judges gave Crawford the first and the third round. It was complete domination for nine rounds. Even if he lost those rounds, it was domination. You got to give credit to Bomack, Brian McIntyre, Crawford's trainer. We all know the resume of Derek James. Ju- uh, excuse me, not Junior. Derek James, trainer of the year last year, amazing stable. And I'm not going to call him out, but I'm going to give credit to Brian Mo- uh, McIntyre, Bomack. He devised a game plan. That worked to perfection. Took away Earl's jab and absolutely pounced on him. Anytime Earl was open, a counter by Crawford. These counters were lightning quick. Absolutely lightning quick. If Earl kept that left hand down for even a second, Crawford was pouncing on him, hitting with a shot. Crawford did everything and more in what he needed to do to secure those four belts at Welter- uh, for the welterweight undisputed champion of the world. He did everything. He counterpunched. He jabbed. He looked extremely powerful. We all talked about Spence Jr. being the bigger welterweight for years. That's been the conversation. Well, of course, you know, getting down to 147, I do believe was an issue for Spence. No excuses. He said no excuses. He signed it at welterweight. This is where the fight was going to be, the first fight at least, right? No excuses. Um, So maybe the weight did play an effect. No excuses. Crawford demolished him. Crawford looked like the bigger guy, felt like the bigger guy. Every time Crawford threw a jab, it backed up Earl two or three steps, a jab. And then his power punches just to damage. We all have seen the photos, the videos of Spence's face, man. That's what Spence usually does to his opponents. But on Saturday night, Spence got a little taste of his own medicine, what he dishes out to almost all of his opponents. Just broken down. You give credit to Spence for just going out on a shield. It was a great stoppage by Harvey Dock as Crawford was looking to finish, but Crawford did it. He made one of the closest fights, a 50-50 fight, a fight we've talked about for six years now, look absolutely lopsided and one-sided in his favor. And he is clearly, without a doubt, pound for pound, the best fighter in the world. There's no conversations, no nothing about it. I know Anyway, had an amazing performance with Fulton. I watched that fight. I was astounded. I'm sorry. Crawford is easily pound for pound number one after that performance he put on in Vegas on July 29th. Looking at it, man, just kind of, I'm still a little speechless on just how Spence performed. I don't know if it was the weight. I know a lot of people claim he just didn't look himself before the fight. Looked drained. Heck, people say he looked high. And obviously, that's never the case. He was not high before he fought. But he looked a little drained, right? Or looked tired. 
wasn't really warming up in the locker room. So you wonder what exactly did happen before that fight. He came in exactly 147. We know the weight cut was hard for him. It's been hard for him at 147 for a few years. But I don't think it played that that much of an effect. I think inactivity, ring rust. I I said I didn't think ring rust was going to be a problem. I think it was. He, Spence and Derek James said my time, his timing was awful. And I, I, and I probably can speak for everyone else who watched the fight saying, yeah, we agree. Your timing was awful. Every shot Crawford was hitting him. I believe I saw Crawford landed 60% of his power, uh, not even his power shots, his punches, just 60% of his punches. That's unheard of in a fight like this, of this magnitude. Unheard of. And Crawford did it. And of course, Spence isn't known for the greatest defense in the world, but 60%? You just got to tip your hat to Crawford. Any little sliver of an angle, he was hitting Spence. Took away that jab. Spence was working that jab his first round, a little bit in that second round. And Crawford caught him in the second round. And here's the thing. A lot of people think, oh, once he got caught in the second round, the fight was over. I, I, don't, I don't. Even Crawford said in the post-fight interview, that was a flash knockdown. Spence was just a little off balance, got hit with a nice couple shots, went down. I thought he came out and had a good third round, right? That's the thing. A f- knockdown early in that fight, you can come back from. Heck, if the judges gave Spence the first and the third round, and then Crawford had the knockdown in round two, it's a tie fight going into the fourth round. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's still a close fight. You didn't lose the fight. But come that fourth round, that fifth round, that sixth round, it was all Crawford. Just domination. Every punch. As a Spence fan, I winced. I was like, oh my goodness. He's getting, wo- he's getting beat up. It was hard to watch. Honestly, it seemed like Crawford might have been toying with him a little, not beating up too too easily, man. He was just doing whatever he wanted in that ring. And Spence hit him with a couple good shots. Spence did catch him, but Crawford said afterwards, I felt, you know, he hit me clean, flush with one shot in either the first or second round. And I thought to myself, oh, this is his power? This is it? It's going to be a long night for him. I believe in the seventh round, that's the round where um, Spence got knocked twice, down, uh, knocked down twice in the round. Spence hits, I believe Spence is on the ropes. I can't remember if this is the first or second knockdown. Spence hits Crawford with a nice left. And I'm sitting, I'm, I'm, I see, I'm like, ooh, nice left. Obviously, I'm a Spence guy. You know I'm a Spence guy. I was rooting for Spence. I predicted Spence, a Spence win. I was like, ooh, nice left. Crawford hits him. The arena stands up. I'm like, ooh, okay, it's one shot. Spence just hit him with a nice left right on the chin. Crawford hits him again. Two times and like it felt like a split second and Spence was down and I sat there like Spence just landed maybe his best shot at the fight. Crawford said, okay, threw two more and knocked him down. It just there was a levels on Saturday night and Crawford showed, hey, we're one and two, but me being one, there's there's some space between it. There is some space at 147 between us. And I don't know. Maybe the inactivity for Spence did catch up to him. What was it, a 14, 15 month layoff versus Ugas? Maybe that hurt his timing. Maybe uh, Crawford's fight against David Abanesian really helped him. I'm not sure. I'm not in these training camps, right? But whatever Terrence Crawford was doing, man, whatever Crawford wanted to do, he was doing. There's no resistance by Spence, it felt like. And I mean, still, I'm in shock that this fight went this way. A fight that I said I thought Spence would win by decision. But in my mind, leading up to the fight, I had scenarios where, yeah, Crawford can win this fight. Crawford easily could win this fight. But what played out on July 29th was not in any scenario I envisioned. I did not, in, I did not envision complete and utter domination by Terrence Crawford. I just didn't. And maybe I need to pay more attention to Terrence Crawford. But you got to give it up for Crawford. He did what he had to do. And he put the whole world on notice. It's the Terrence Crawford era. And for me, who I've talked crap about Crawford. I've talked smack. You know, as a Spence fan, man, I've went at him. Obviously, I haven't gone out. But, like, I've talked. Like, he doesn't want smoke. He doesn't want nothing. I tip my hat. I bow to him, man. What a performance. You've proved you are the best in the world. There's no excuses for me. It was an off night for Spence and an all-time great night for Crawford. In that big moment, moment, you got to prove, you know, you got to rise your game to the next level, and that's what Crawford did. Do I think, say, if we had the best Earl Spence that, that night? Yeah, it would be a closer fight. I don't know if he wins that fight, though. That Terrence Crawford, I don't know if anyone beats that Terrence Crawford that we saw on July 29th. Insane. An absolutely insane insane performance by Crawford and you just got to give it up to him tip your hat to him clap everything to Terrence Crawford knocked out every opponent he's fought at welterweight I believe now he's on 11 11 straight KO streak (sighs) he's the man he is the man I'm interested to see what he does next right every time he knocked down Spence he went to the ropes 
started yelling at Jermel Charlo. Charlo's got his hands full with Canelo coming September 30th, which is going to be a great fight. Can't wait to cover that one. I want to see Crawford uh, Charlo. If Charlo does lose that Canelo fight at 168, come back down to 154, man. I do want to see Tim Zhu, but heck, I want to see Crawford Charlo ASAP. I want to see that one ASAP. I wouldn't mind watching a rematch at 154. There can't be a rematch at 147. I'm sorry. Spence, you're 154. Don't go to 147. Get you some strength. His wet legs just look wobbly every time he got knocked down. Get some more strength than you. Go to 154. Heck, you can, a few years, you could go to 160, to be honest. He stayed, he's been at 147 his whole career. It's time to move up. Don't take a rematch at 147, or I think the result might even be worse. Than it was the first time. If we don't even see a rematch of this fight, I'm not. I'm not angry. I'm not angry if we don't see a rematch. Because after Saturday night, I don't. I don't know if there's any version of Earl Spence that beats that version of Terence Crawford. I don't know if any fighter beats that version of Terence Crawford. And that's no knock on Earl. I love Earl to death. But you might have just found your match with this one, like how Wilder met his match with Fury, right? But if they fought at 154, I wouldn't be against it. Let's see it again. Let's see if Spence can make some adjustments, right? Again, these two of the best in the world, right? I see people overreacting to Spence saying he needs to retire. That's a clown. That's a clown comment. If you think Spence is overrated or needs to retire, you can go ahead and leave this podcast, leave this channel, man. I'm not saying that just because I'm a Spence fan. I'm saying that because he dared to be in the ring with one of the all-time greats and he lost, right? He went out on the shield. He didn't drop down on a knee. He didn't wave the white flag and throw the towel and he went out on his shield gave it everything he had and so what terence crawford was the better man saying he needs to retire are you kidding me that's just a clown comment and it stinks that boxing has one of one of the, its few nights where it's in its main in the mainstream media it seems like everyone in the world is tuned in and the reaction is telling fighters they need to retire this is why fighters don't fight the best because they're afraid of this reaction that Hey, I was, you know, I lose one fight and people are like, you need to retire or he's no good anymore. It's a reason why boxing keeps getting held back. But these fighters, man, they're breaking through. They're fighting the best and you love to see it. So I give my hats, my congrats and everything to Crawford and Spence. Heck, even Crawford right after the fight goes up to Spence. He thanks him. He said, without you, this fight doesn't get made. So there's mutual respect between the two as we should have for each of the fighters as well. Just seeing what, how people have talked after this fight, man. It's crazy. And Spence is with the top five fighter in the world. He took one loss to the best fighter in the world, event, you know, evidently. He's still a top 10 fighter in the world, man. It's just irritating to see people try and create these narratives that mm, he was no good. He was overrated. No, he was a three-time world champ for a reason. He took those belts from those guys for a reason. Crawford just beat him. Crawford whooped him. Crawford was the better man. Give Crawford all the respect he needs. And I know people, maybe the car accident does play an effect with Spence's career. It's no excuse for me. Spence came out, whooped up on Danny Garcia, whooped up on your Dennis Ugas. I'm not using the car accident as an excuse, and I don't think people should either. Right, he's proven that he's been great after the car accident. Maybe before the car accident in 2019, this is a different fight. Obviously, younger guys, but who knows? We'll never know. We got this fight July 29th, 2023, and I don't think it was a second too late. People wanting to say both are old, both, man, you're not going to enjoy any boxing if you're coming to those opinions. Enjoy what we watched. We watched two of the best go at it, and we watched with our own eyes an all-time great be made in Terrence Crawford. He caught the fish, man. He caught the big fish. He did it. So all the respect in the world for Terrence Crawford. But what does he do next, right? Does he go up to 154? I don't think he goes up to 54 yet. Unless it's Charlo. But a part of me thinks that Crawford's just so prideful. He might see people say, you know, Spence was weight drained. Go up to 154. It would be different. I think Crawford might be so prideful. He'll go up to 154 just to say, hey, I'll whoop you at this weight too. But I, I don't, honestly, I don't see a rematch happening to this fight. Again, I wouldn't be opposed to it happening. I just don't see it happening. I would love to see Crawford Boots. Boots Ennis, man. I would love to see that fight. And just an FYI. I'm favoring Crawford in any fight he fights in. Spence rematch fights Charlo. I got Crawford winning, and I love Charlo, man. I got Crawford winning that fight. That I have to look into it more. But right now, I'd have Crawford winning. I got Crawford beating Boots. Keith Thurman. Um, Ugas. I'm trying to think of some other uh, welterweights that are even worthy of the, um, Virgil Ortiz. Probably he'll go up to 154. Stan Jonas. There's just a level to this. Crawford's on another planet than these guys. Honestly, man, nothing but 
respect for Terrence Crawford, what he did in that ring, July 29th. Absolute domination and demolishing Earl Spence Jr. Crawford looked on point. Every punch he threw was powerful. Just the power. I'd see Crawford throw a punch and Spence go back three or four steps. I thought Spence was going to be the more powerful guy. I did think Spence was effective when you'd push uh, Crawford up on the ropes and kind of just pressure him. Don't let him get a shot off. Just keep throwing at him. I thought Spence did that. But there's only a couple times he could do that because Crawford just dictated everything in that fight. But I commend both fighters for a great event they put on. The weigh-in was a success. Everything was a success for this fight. Over, uh, I'm just seeing the reports today. Over $20 million for this gate. I'm seeing 700000 pay-per-view. That's not even. That's not official. That's kind of just pre- uh, preliminary numbers, I believe. So like, it could do north of 700000 If it does 700000 that's a win. That is a win. And I'm happy that both of these guys, I think, I don't want to pocket watch, but I think I saw both of them guaranteed without pay-per-view nothing. Just guarantee 25 mil, both of them. Congrats. You guys deserve that, both Spence and Crawford. I thank him for just bringing, help bringing boxing back, man. All these fights this year, Plant Benavidez, Tank Ryan, Fulton um, Inoue, Haney Loma, Crawford Spence, Spence Crawford, man, Canelo Charlo. All of these fights, man, are helping bring in boxing back to the forefront as one of the best sports in America. I, not even forget America in the world, right? Getting back to that point where it should be, where Saturday nights, it feels like the whole world is tuned in to one event. It's awesome. And these guys, the fight that we've, the fight fans have wanted to see for years happen. Like, what's next, right? Well, well what are we going to call for now? There's some fights we want to see, but we'll, we'll talk about all that in due time. It's about Terrence Crawford and giving Terrence Crawford the ultimate respect for what he did in that ring and proving he is the best fighter in the world and one of the greatest to ever lace him up. All the respect in the world goes to Terrence Crawford. And Spence, I'd love to see a Brian Castano fight, a Sebastian Fundora fight at 154 if a Crawford rematch doesn't take place. The Big Fish will be back. Man Down will be back. I'm sure of it. And we need to show Earl the support. We're showing Spence. We're showing Ryan Garcia, man. Caleb Plant. Stephen Fulton. They got in the ring. And you know what? They lost to the better man. That happens in the sport. It is what it is. It is what it is. But we commend him for getting in that ring, fighting, and going out on a shield like that. So thank you to both Earl Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford for putting on a great event. And for Crawford for putting on a great performance. And we, as a public, got to see with our own eyes an all-time great. An all-time great. We already knew he was a great. But an all-time great be formed in front of our own eyes watching him on July 29th, 2023 in Las Vegas, Nevada. I was at the fight, man. It was a great atmosphere. A lot of Bud fans. The walkouts were crazy. YouTube took down my Spence walkout. That should be back up. I'm fighting YouTube on that one. It should be back up. You can go watch my uh, Crawford's walkout with Eminem. That was pretty cool. Spence's was Big X the plug. That's Texas. That's DFW right there. Overall, just great. Isak Cruz did not perform to how I wanted him to perform, expected. He might have fought himself out of a tank rematch. We'll figure that out later. But a great event, and I'm glad it happened. I'm glad I, I'm glad I got to witness. I'm grateful I got to witness greatness with my own eyes in the arena. Make sure you subscribe to the Never Drop Podcast, right? I'm covering these big fights. Heck, I'm covering all these fights. This YouTube, we're getting it rolling. Make sure you subscribe. We're trying to get to 500 subscribers. I appreciate you if you're listening all the way through. Follow me on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcast. And subscribe to me on YouTube. The Never Drop Podcast on YouTube. Go subscribe. Watch some of my videos, man. I got videos from the fight. got videos from the Tank and Ryan fight. Trying to see what fight I'm going to next. It might be here in my hometown recording this. Jake Paul fights in a couple days. Maybe. I'm not too big of a Jake Paul boxing guy, but we'll see, right? Again, I appreciate you listening this far, and congratulations to the first undisputed champion in the four-belt world to wait era, Terrence Crawford, for a masterful performance he put on against Earl Spence Jr. Spence will be back, but now we do know this is Terrence Crawford era. I appreciate you all for listening to the Never Drop Podcast. Subscribe, follow, do all of that. That's all I got for you. I'm out. Peace.